Welcome to the first episode of Being Mum. I'm Sarah Rippard. Join me as we journey into the exciting world of babies, pregnancy, family and beyond. Conscious parenting. This is what Being Mum is all about. Imagine if we could reach the full potential of parenthood. How amazing would that be? On Being Mum, no matter what your circumstance, you are not alone. Your voice will be heard. For our first show, we wanted to address a serious subject matter, one I feel is important and difficult to talk about because many a time it's associated with shame and failure. I'm talking about mummy burnout. Motherhood, what should be the happiest time in your life, can for some be an endless feeling of helplessness and despair. Every day, thousands of women are suffering from anxiety, fear, a sense of being trapped, and the loss of one's identity. Constant fatigue, being short fused, frustrated, and isolated leave many mothers burned out. So what is mummy burnout? How do we address it? But more importantly, how does it affect our ability as parents? Dr. Diana Lynn Barnes, an internationally recognized expert on the treatment of perinatal mood disorders, which is the period immediately before and after birth, has a practice that specializes in women's maternal mental health. My name is Diana Lynn Barnes. I'm a psychotherapist in private practice. I specialize in women's mental health, but particularly around uh, the childbearing years. My daughter is turning 19 in a few weeks, and within the first year after she was born, I was actually hospitalized four different times, and nobody knew what was wrong with me. And it took literally a year to the day of her birth before somebody even used the word postpartum depression. And um, by that time, I was in a rather you know, fragile physical and emotional state because of lack of appropriate treatment. So as I began my recovery, that led to my fervent desire to understand much more about the psychological gestation that takes place when women move towards motherhood. I often find that new moms are stretched beyond their limits. You know, we live in a culture that really idealizes mothers and motherhood. We do believe that moms are all things to all people all the time, that we're kind of omnipresent. We're expected to raise intelligent, creative children. We're expected to run a household. We're expected to be a companion, friend, and intimate partner with our husbands. We're expected to have a life outside of home that's interesting and that brings us fulfillment or money. And so when women come face to face with the discrepancies between what the culture tells them about how they should think, how they should act, how they should feel, and how it really is, that can very quickly lead to a downward spiral of depression, of burnout, of exhaustion. Now here joining us is Dr. Diana Barnes, author of the journey to parenthood myths reality and what really matters welcome to the show thank, thank you, you for so being much here. my pleasure oh before we get started i have to say that um i'm a huge fan of the book <laughs> okay thank you and when i read it 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 rubbed me in ways that i found myself getting defensive because i realized reading it that what you're saying is so true so thank you for really rubbing me the wrong <laughs> way <laughs> you're so welcome about that oh you're welcome it lingered on my mind for so long. So let's talk about what is mommy burnout and why is it on the rise? Well, mommy burnout is really simply, very simply, it's a state of physical, mental, and emotional exhaustion. A woman in mommy burnout will be feeling what psychologically? She's feeling at the end of her rope. Mm -hmm. She's feeling like she cannot do one more thing. She may start to feel resentful, resentful even of her children, mm -hmm. resentful of her partner, mm. um, feeling as though she's carrying the load all on her own. And physical manifestations of burnout? What could Headaches, we see? muscle aches, more colds. Uh, women who are experiencing burnout may have higher levels of uh, being what I call snappy, you know, oh, irritable. Oh, I think I can identify with that one, yes, <laughs> snappy is big uh, in our home. They're lacking in energy. And would you say that the burnout has has become more, I mean, as we heard, epidemic today versus, say, 100 years ago? I think one of the things that really 
kind of contributes mm -hmm. to mommy burnout is this whole idea we have about motherhood. You know, the oh. good news is that we idealize mothers, and the bad news is that we idealize mothers, <laughs> and we should idealize mothers because we do quite a job, it's quite a challenge, and yet these idealized ideas uh, that society holds, kind of what I call the myths of motherhood, mm -hmm. I think sets women up in this way that they can't possibly succeed. And the interesting thing is, is that we find that among women who are much more motivated to be really good, good moms, who want to mm. do everything right, those are the moms that are probably more vulnerable to mommy burnout. They're trying to fit into this sort of construct yes. of what's acceptable. Yes. So it becomes like, a huge lie that everyone is sort of trying to keep up appearances and it's really overwhelming. It is overwhelming I, and I can't tell you how many times a woman has sat across from me in the office and said how come nobody told me? How come no one said it was this hard? I mean is is mommy burnout the same as postpartum depression which is what you went through? They're very different. Mm -hmm. uh, mommy burnout is really the result of a woman's lack of self-care. Mm. Um, it is a state of just tremendous exhaustion. And if a woman begins to take care of herself in better ways, eating properly, getting enough rest, usually this will remit. It's not a medical condition per se. Mm -hmm. When we look at postpartum depression, mm -hmm. there's a much more clinical presentation to the symptoms. First of all, it's happening in the first year. And some of the symptoms that we see are things like just overwhelming anxiety to the point where a woman cannot cope. She's not sleeping at all. Is the chemical makeup of what's going on much more prevalent? We know that there's genetic vulnerability, so we look at moms who have a personal or a family history of some kind of depression or anxiety disorder. The social stressors, what's going on in the environment, are there major changes that are happening in your life? This also contributes. Is, is mommy burnout a gateway to postpartum depression? Could it be? I think that if we don't wow. address it, right. we're certainly much more vulnerable to depression because some of the symptoms of mommy burnout mm -hmm. look very much like some of the symptoms of depression. Is it hard to diagnose So it's a, it's a okay. very, very fine line. Right. It, well, next we'll meet a mother who will share her struggle with mommy burnout and how it has impacted her family. Coming up on Being Mom. Did you and your husband have any kind of conversation before you had a daughter that you were going to stay home? We never really discussed that. You know, I just feel trapped dealing with a two-year-old all the time. It feels like it's a constant battle. I am tired of fighting with my daughter. 